Hey, this is Mark here at Garrus Guitars, and this is the future of guitar retail. This is part three in a small series I'm doing called Open Books, um, where I just talk about what it is to own a small guitar store uh, to um, in, in the 21st century, the changes that we've seen since Gary started the store in 89. Um, so the Gary era, and then I bought the store from Gary five about five years ago. He was thinking of retiring. Um, so I bought it essentially so I could give him a job because he didn't have the savings to retire. So he's still here part time, and um, and I wanted to keep the spirit of the small guitar store um, going. If you haven't seen uh, the other editions, part one and part two, maybe watch those first so you know what I'm talking about, or just keep listening. This should be kind of standalone. What the future of uh, guitar retail? Well, the future of retail, brick and mortar retail, is grim, um, and I do believe it. So. Uh, a couple of things that I, I like to quote, um, and I don't know who to attribute these quotes to, but one is, everything is impossible until it's obligatory. <laughs> Meaning, um, everything just seems like, oh, that's never going to happen, until it just, not only has it happened, it's the only way it happens. So when we're talking about buying guitars online instead of in person, when we talk about selling guitars online instead of in person, because that's going to be a thing in the future too. Uh, a company like Guitar Center. Guitar Center is very actively buying a lot of used gear right now. I think they 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 see that their future is in buying and selling used gear as much as the new stuff. Um, so they will um, they'll just kind of have a system where you take a picture with your phone and send them a thing, and they get you a box or you know whatever, and it goes to them somehow. Um, and then people choosing to sell their own things through uh, you know these sites like Marketplace and Craigslist and all that. And reverb and, and eBay. Although reverb and eBay have shrinking margins as well, which is bad for stores that have that business model, but not necessarily individuals, because you can actually get some good money for something you're selling. So, um, so yeah, maybe something will come around where the things you think that only can be done in a store are no longer necessary in a store. So there's that. This other thing I like to quote, which is kind of what I'm banking on here, is everything works until it doesn't. Um, so there is a future for retail, brick and mortar retail, actual uh, stores, but it's um, and it's going to keep working until it doesn't, and it's going to be apparent when it stops working. Just it's like an old car. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, you know, if you ever had a car die on you, you just keep driving. Old truck, you just keep driving, 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 and one day the frame just breaks. And just, that's done. You can, you can kind of predict what will happen, but everything just goes until it doesn't. So, our model here is, like I was saying in another video, is to be uh, expanding our business in a declining market. Kind of uh, because the market's in decline, there's, a, there's enough fluctuation to go on to like to be able to, to uh, increase the volume of business and um, increase the services that we do. And that's what we've been working on. It's going okay. I will say, and I, I kind of joked in another video, I don't know if it, was, it wasn't necessarily a joke because there's truth in it, that everyone gets paid and then I get paid after afterwards and I don't get paid here. I get paid a little bit. Um, if it was, uh, if I showed up at a guitar store and worked every day, I'd probably get that kind of money. So a lot of money comes in, a lot of money goes out. But like I said uh, in response to those comments as well as I think I said this before, I'm not in this for the money. That's... That's uh, strange, you know, because this is a capitalist operation. Money is important. Money, we have to keep our head above water. However, uh, money is just a part of what we do here. I give people jobs. I help people find their musical instruments. It's a community service. It's a, uh, it's something that I like. If I were selling, oh, I don't know, vacuum cleaners. I, who sells vacuum cleaners anymore? I don't. But you know, like a specialty store that sold something else. Um, I would not enjoy it as much. I, um, I enjoy music. I enjoy musicians. I enjoy 95% of the people who come into the store and 95% of the people who leave comments on these videos. Um, generally a uh, great bunch of folks and uh, it's just good to, to be in this business and, and do, uh, do business like that. So that's why I'm here. It's not like there's an incredible, you know, this is, is going to make me rich. Luckily, I'm already doing okay, so I don't need this to make me rich. I just need it to, to float and be cool and be fun and to keep 
like I said, give Gary his job. Uh, Gary works here part-time fixing guitars, and that was always what he loved doing the most. He didn't like the uh, the business angle of things as much as just, you know, just loves fixing things. And then um, uh, other independent contractors, employees. Um, so that's an important part of having a, a store like this. Now, back to the main point, the future. Guitar Center, it will continue to, to be in decline. It may reorganize. It may shrink. I've spoken a lot about it because it's on my mind. I keep an eye on what's going there. Um, now I don't, I'm not one of these people who says, oh, you know, once Guitar Center goes out of business, I'll be, you know, everyone will have to come here and buy these guitars, and then, you know, we'll be doing so great. Guitar Center provides a service. First of all, they, they provide, um, there are a lot of people's gateway to the guitar and to music. So that's important. A lot of people just have a Guitar Center somewhere, or that's what you do. What do you do when you need a TV? You go to the big store that sells TVs, and you look at every TV, and you buy one. If you're experienced in, or I should say camera. That might be a better example. Um, but if you're experienced in it, um, you're like, oh, I know what I want, and it's this, this other thing, or I know the kind of service I want, and it's not the kind of service I can get there. But they provide you know, a, a very big thing, and they actually support um, a lot of people work there, a lot of musicians work in there, a lot of people just like the people, a lot of, a lot of their workers shop here. <laughs> so I got that. Um, and so it's... Uh, so I don't see, I don't hope for a future without Guitar Center, but I foresee it uh, because as you know, as the as it narrows, as the popularity of the guitar narrows, and uh, this big push we had after the pandemic kind of calms down as far as you know, buying and selling guitars. Um, they're going very heavily into used guitars. That's uh, if you notice lately. Uh, so that's. That could be a lifeline for them. I don't know. But overall, the, uh, they'll either shrink and just be a smaller company or they'll have to go out of business. Now, I um, have a customer who was one of the uh, Fender investors from the early 80s and a player and worked for Fender uh, for most of his career, retired. And uh, he just, he was accidentally, I don't know, accidentally, he, he let off information that wasn't necessarily public. And one is that the Guitar Center owed them at the time, probably twice that now, about a hundred million dollars. And they were, Fender was getting ready to take a haircut of about half of that. If there's some kind of reorganization. Because I've had debt restructuring, but actually like real bankruptcy is when you can stiff your, stiff people on your bills. Um, so, uh, they were ready, and you have to, and this has to go in front of a judge and stuff like that. So, Fender's just getting ready for a world without Guitar Center, just in case. And part of that is their site, and building up their site, and their online sales, and that's something they said they would never do. Same thing with Godin. We at Godin, we don't sell guitars on our site, we just want to show people the guitars, and you, the stores, you're the people who help Robert make this thing happen, so... And now it's like, well, you know, I guess we can sell some stuff on the site. And then Fender did the same thing. Um, so e-commerce is is the future. So And direct sales from manufacturers tends to be a more of a future, too. So uh, what's literally in it for this store? And like I said, everything goes until it doesn't. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride this horse till it don't go no more. And um, there is a future of 10 years, 20 more 10 to 15 I wouldn't say 20 of uh, this being a profitable kind of business to have a service that people will want I do uh, believe that in general specialty retail is uh, is really just taken just in general just taking taking it really bad guitar stores are doing better compared to mm, vacuum cleaner stores or phone stores or you know um, and you can, I can look around here at the plaza and specialty retail stuff. Uh, uh, that's kind of all. Because um, this was a lot of just small business, specialty retail niche things. And uh, now it's uh, just turning. These kinds of plazas are turning into places where you go for appointments. So, the future. Um, less brick and mortar sales in the next five to ten years. Next five years, I feel good. Next five to ten years, there's going to be a serious haircut and uh, a serious reduction in brick and mortar sales. Uh, because we can provide services as well, we can hang out for a, a little while longer, and we're just kind of determined to be the last left standing just out of principle. 
So, um, what does that mean to you? What you should do? Do whatever feels right. I like to encourage you to buy at independent stores. Um, whatever you're buying, but I have Amazon Prime too, and I, I initially got it because it gave it away, and then they're like, "Oh, we'll give you shipping." My wife likes to buy handbags and stuff, and and so you know, it's it's kind of like that's how they get you. <laughs> Um, and I, so I buy stuff online I'm not always going to the specialty retailers, but, um, we hope to stay one of the special kind of places where people can, uh, where people can really feel that they're, they're the time that they spent getting here and, and doing business here is, uh, worthwhile. So that's it for now. I'm actually going to do one more of these. I thought this was going to be the last one, but I wanted to do one because people were talking about like this kind of like idea of like business school because what I was talking about before is talking about margins and, and, and competition and stuff so I want to do like a little uh, one more and I'm going to talk about um, the people I use as a model for my business and my small business stuff so thanks for watching uh, we'll talk to you soon watch all the other videos here on YouTube um, Facebook Instagram anywhere you interact with stuff hopefully we're there find us and thanks for watching